Hello there, and welcome to episode 33 of Shadow Home. And today is a very, very difficult episode for me, because I I went into a deep dive on on how to fix my problem with the game not respecting our mighty mountain home, because it is obviously built on an impassable tile. I discovered that there seems to be pretty much nothing we can do. As you see here, our entire neighborhood counts as inaccessible. And by now, I'm pretty sure that this is the culprit. This is the reason why we're not getting promoted to a barony and the whole mountain home plan, <laughs> which I came here because of is just not happening. So I went into D into DF hack and uh, we're uh, we're sadly not seeing any features to make a place a barony. What I did find though is I was able to announce a place uh, as somebody a king, queen for that matter. So there are options to to get it done by brute forcing it, but uh, not necessarily by by making it in a clean uh, decision. So now I am really, really torn. That that's why it is a very difficult episode for me, because I'm now sort of insecure how how we're we're going to count this as a victory. Do I assign a rogue king? Do we just usurp the old king because they're uh, outrageously not respecting our um, our our wonderful mountain home here? I had no clue what I'd be getting myself into when I decided to build my uh, fort here. In all honesty, I I, I, I did this for the first time and. Uh, now, in hindsight and understanding how Dwarf Fortress works, it makes absolutely sense that nobody finds his way here in an official way, as this is impassable terrain. I still don't know why and how our 200 jolly old fellows came here, but that is not up to the uh, to the discussion here. What what's remaining to say is we we will not get a natural mountain hold here together. So. For the time being, I decided to procrastinate the problem, just like any grown-up person would do. Namely, we're going to uh, set up the, the, the throne room and finish the castle. And if anything, uh, if I still haven't made a decision up until then, uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll make a uh, I'll I'll make you guys vote or something like that. I'm not too sure. For now, I am I'm I'm finally giving each of my dwarfs their uh, their cabinets. Are you proud of me? Finally, this is uh, probably the the fortress that sees its interior furniture the latest ever. I I'm very sorry for them, guys. But uh, I said it a couple of times in my comment section. I. Um, I was a little bit burnt out in apartment building when I went here, and it uh, it, it felt really good to take a uh, break from from furnishing these uh, these rooms. But uh, it's about time. What can I say? So far, yeah, that that's what I uh, what I came up with here today. Stukos, the miner, has has been found dead. Wow. I think this is uh, the the injured dwarf from the other day when we when we freed the monsters he's down there. There was one of them happily and mortally injured here, and I was already like, "Hey, how the heck are you supposed to survive that?" And uh, turns out she didn't. Just uh, really, really sad. They didn't. I don't know if it was a man or a human or a female, but uh, either way, sort of sad. It was uh, the the adamantine pillars. They always eat lives. It's one thing I learned the hard way. No matter how you do it, if you're not chickening out on every little uh, challenge, I'm already avoiding uh, a lot of them actively. You will see some dead dwarfs by the end of the road. You just, just have to. I mean, I personally like this as it implicates that uh, 
Adamantine is just a uh, very exclusive resource. But yeah, you get the idea. So, we're setting up boxes today as well. All the luxury for a dwarven kind, okay? I, I haven't forgotten them. I just uh, I just wasn't able to get myself to do this. But now today, I, I actually enjoy again putting up boxes. So, that's all the fort thought that I had. And uh, to me, it was really hard to fire up War Fortress today after I've noticed that uh, I am sitting in front of a very difficult uh, decision. Because somehow, I I don't see the necessity for a usurpation here. I don't know, it doesn't feel like a native decision to to the, to the uh, narrative here, you know? There was no bigger sense of rebellion or, or any... Uh, I mean, they don't have any cultural edges to nail them down on. I mean, these guys, they... They all believe in mountains and minerals, basically. They uh, they don't even have any kinky uh, religious traits, nothing. These guys are pretty much the most uh, basic cliché dwarfs that I've ever met in my career as Dwarf Fortress player. So, yeah, what can I do? What can I do? Let me know in the comment section what you'd do. I'm personally against the uh, usurpation path. This was supposed to be my grand finale of the series, you know? That's why it makes me really uh, talk so much about it while we're placing boxes in the apartments. It is... Uh, if you are around my series for a longer uh, period of time, you, you surely understand that, uh, you know, this uh, sort of hinders my, my feeling of triumph <laughs> What's the series. Surely does. So we're only a few more boxes away from having this uh, topic done once and for all. I mean, making all of the apartments all at once was certainly a pretty lengthy experience, but I had good company with you and my thoughts. So let's get downstairs and see what the miners excavated. Um, we have a couple of extra strips here and there, but uh, this area looks picked clean finally nice so let's uh, go for the fortifications here and there my last few bits and bobs of uh, of mistrust so I also have good news I'm not only uh, I'm not only sulking and pondering today so um, I made up a couple of ideas how I'm going to uh, to go for the throne room and uh, I hope it'll be It'll be really cool. So, yeah. It's just the mayor and his bracelets again. Well, I really want to somehow implement what's happening here into the story. That is my biggest desire behind this whole um, problematic. And I really hope that by the end of this uh, building process, I've came up with an idea. That's all I can say. So that's really... Snuck up and hit me from behind. That's all I can say. I, I really didn't see that kind of an issue coming. But once I saw that everything else in my neighborhood is uh, inaccessible, and only the Etins and Giants and other Titans of the uh, of the nature are finding us, it dawned on me. It dawned on me that uh, we might be. We might be cut off from the rest of the world. Well, uh, it'll be... Taking down that creature. I always keep forgetting which squadron is sitting on which layer. I only know that the Inks of Mightiness are, are, are bottom-most. So... Rest in peace, Chazelle, mindful Carmine the Wondrous. He came here 420 years old just to die. 420, lol. There's a couple of uh, teeth. Etten teeth. Yeah. 
It's uh, it was a pretty lengthy fight. I gotta say, it was uh, taking my military way longer than I thought to take this thing apart. But uh, oh, oh, all that cyan uh, text—that's all gore. <laughs> We're uh, quickly going over it. It's all gore. The reddish stuff is the Etten trying to stop the uh, dwarfs from goring him, her, them, whatever. So that sums it up, but it was a very, very long list of gore. I don't even want to know more. Glad my dwarfs did enjoy their work, I guess. And glad they're so good at it. Just uh, very sad that they cannot take down fiery enemies. I mean, I just would need to uh, to get over my antipathy of uh, of Mark's dwarfs in general. That would help, but I don't know. Currently, my uh, my 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 personal stubbornness is uh, stronger in, in in terms of waiting until the Adams uh, brothers finally find time to update that stuff. I have full respect for for things just not happening in in time, but I want them to happen as much as I want them to happen. But it's uh, it's fine. I'm happy that Dwarf Fortress exists in the first place. Okay, so we got ourselves something here, something there. Yeah, well, that's the last bits and bobs of the areas there. Part of me is very tempted to make this, uh, I don't know, sort of a ghost town vibe. Forgotten part of the civilization kind of thing. Ah, well. This was not how I imagined it to go down. I mean, usually I'm pretty good at uh, playing the ball that uh, games toss at me. But if it's, uh, it's a bucket ball, <laughs> it ain't as easy. It just ain't as easy. Is there so much water, I wonder? <laughs> Whatever. So, let's take the last pieces of this place as serious as we can. I mean, I don't want to get uh, ambushed on the, on the last few meters by a magma cavity if I'm lucky, or fire banshee if I'm unlucky. Man, I saw how one of these fire monsters took apart an entire squadron of my best soldiers, all by itself and alone. And that was the moment when I knew that... Uh, I never want to mess with these ever again. If I don't have to. Fire is, in a weird way, similarly deadly as, as webs. Ugh. So, here in that corner, it's nightly uh, not visible, but this is a cavity. Ugh. It's pretty difficult to spot a cavity. One of them deadly ones. Sure. So we're going to set up door here to smooth out the wall. Dwarven business. The good stuff here is that we have the entire perimeter there solids. So we don't know anything about that area though. So we gotta be careful there still, but not about that. And this way you just uh, slowly carve your way forward. I love this. Since, sincerely, I, I always loved playing uh, Minesweeper before it got boring. Get the idea of what I'm saying? Oh, a fire fart. But I personally love the uh, version with demons, angels, fire farts, and artifacts more. What can I say? It's the better Minesweeper version. So, let's see, this one is solid area too, so we are just going to dig it up. The water cavity is relatively small, so we're just going to le uh, let it leak all out and dry up. That area here, though, is a pretty big one, so we will need another pump 
action thing stuff. So I'll be setting up my uh, my, my usuals here. So floorings, but not the glass floorings, Eurist. Oh, but uh, you know what? We're we're going to make it like this. Let's do it like that. I'm lazy. That's why I'm flooring that one too. Please don't tell me that anybody's drowning down there right now. Thank you. Wonderful. I mean, the good part is mining dwarfs are usually good at uh, swimming. Bad part is if you're fa falling down there, there's no slope you could climb up with. So you're going to be drowning there, whether you want it or not. O although I, I don't know if if somebody who's good at climbing could climb up the raw wall back up stairs. I don't know. Adventure mode players would know, I guess. Because as far as I know, the uh, dwarves in my fortress have the same interactions as you as a player would have in, in, in adventure mode. That's as far as my understanding goes. I never played much adventure mode, in all honesty. It, uh, I, I want to wait until it's done. I'm willing to play fortress mode with all its kinks and incompletenesses, but I'm not willing to do the same thing with the adventure mode. I'm uh, I'm okay with beta testing one branch of the game, but uh, both of them, that's just... Uh, I don't have that fight in me. I beg the forgiveness. So, uh, here goes the pump. That's a big puddle. It's a pretty big puddle that we're going to dry there. So... But the good news is, we finally got ourselves... Let's see how many, but we should have yeah, 25 wafers. The two wafers of richness. Every time I read adamantine wafers, I'm thinking about breakfast cereals, but that's well, maybe it's just me. Crunchy adamantine wafers. So. Ah, uh, well, I could go this way via scrying, but I also can just go for carving. Okay, I do think also that once the pump is built, we have more than enough room to, uh, to go there and uh, build around that. So wait a sec, we don't know that one. We, we don't know that one. I gotta be careful about that. So let's not do that. I already lost a fair share of people. My population is way below 200, if you've noticed. So I probably should be a little bit more careful, as we seem to have a uh, penchant for work accidents down here in the mine. In all fairness, though, the, the most recent deaths uh, were mostly demons and angels gobbling up uh, civilian personnel, but. Uh, Maybe the civilian personnel shouldn't have been there around in the first place. What am I saying? Problem is that the mining dwarfs will never be safe. As somebody needs to chunk open the wall. My soldiers can't do that. So, I don't feel well around this area. So, we're going to... Whip out our our Arong Thingish, or however this thing is called, and defend our friends if they, so they not don't fall into the puddle there. Who knows? Maybe we're excavating another fire fart and uh, they jump away, in horror. Do I know? Would be a shame if somebody would die only because I didn't whip up my Aro Thingish. Somebody in the comment section lately said something really good. I should use my artifact for Not that I currently have a mind for it. Just want to give it a little quick talk there. This game is so multifaceted that I often forget little micromanagement things. So I really appreciate you guys bringing them up in the comment section. I just beg you to uh, give me some time to process them and, uh, you know, get a creative way in implementing them. I like the one that, uh, that that reminded me that I don't use the artifacts enough a lot, so it's in the making. 
I'm, I'm considering uh, to get it done, but I just uh, wanted to say that with this game I often suffer from a micromanagement information overload, especially while recording, you know? It's just uh, only so and so much the human brain can tackle. All right. Our arrow thingish is in place. That's a 62,000 dwarf book uh, valued piece of floor great. And we excavated yet another fire fart. Wonderful. These are deadly if you don't do it like I do it here. They ignite the person in question and they're immediately dead. I mean, this person probably not, because there was a lot of water around them. So there was a fair chance that the ignited dwarf in question might have had a uh, chance to leap into, into safety and uh, quench the fire. But uh, most of the time they die. If they, if they get that into their face straight directly, the fire explosion, they die. I make it sound less, a lot less uh, deadly than it actually is. But as you see, the, the effect is very easily circumventable by just digging diagonally a location down. Good, so I don't have a chance to dig this from above. So it's leave a time. All right. Then let's do this yet again. Love the trick with the with the switch by now. I didn't notice uh, interaction with switches, doors, and magma cavities before this fortress. In all honesty, it's the first time that I'm using this interaction like that. Very very useful. Okay, we're going to pump out the the water here, as it will allow us to access a much bigger adamantine deposit there. We want to make progress. I mean, I still have a little bit of an issue with how we're going to uh, make this uh, history of this place happen, but I for sure want to get, fulfill my part by providing anything a mountain home could wish for, even if we are inaccessible by any civilization of ours. Silly old fool uh, I am, that I am. But this is Dwarf Fortress in a nutshell. You, I, I basically uh, messed up this run by, by by selecting the wrong spot where I settled down. The whole idea fell flat because I wasn't aware of it uh, that it doesn't work with this uh, with this location. Whoopsie. Well, could it be worse? I love this fort for all I built there, especially since I learned a lot here. And I did promise you a throne room idea. So let's handle that pumping action there. Oh my boy, we're, we're, we're done here, friends. We're done here. Can't stop pumping. Um, so I figured that this shaft here is the most beautiful thing that we got. And I will make the throne room happen. Throne room happen up here. So we're going to floor this entire um, place here. Put a throne here in the center of the room, and I will work with a bit of uh, glass flooring as well. And well, let's see what I can do. I I want to be uh, trying around with things as good as I can. So. That means, firstly, that we need to start digging here. So I want this throne room to be accessible from the sides. The monarch's quarters will then be linked to the uh, areas there. That is at least my plan. So we're going to go, let's use this uh, tool for once. It's not the worst tool for some, uh, some kind of operations. So I want to go for steel blocks here. There we go. Then 
I'd like to have a center square. Something like this. Yeah. Ah, yeah, no X's, of course. So I want to have a glass uh, middle centerpiece there. We're going to make green glass as I as I like the color, and there is no necessity to uh, to go more hardcore than that. In all honesty. All right. That's the least I can do. When it comes down to the castle, I also have a couple of uh, thoughts about finishing touches. We are shockingly far down the road here. I mean, I realized a while ago that the um, announcement to to a bear to to become a barony was uh, way overdue for this uh, place here. But yeah. That's all not that much of a big deal, I guess. So, when it comes down to the castle walls, here goes. I, I saw this portion and I, I liked it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and make our parapet happen here already. And I'll be not setting up any further um, levels there. This will be the highest uh, level of the tower. As we can see here, this will set up the, the center element to a nice elevated spot. So this is... I had it all right in the first attempt. I did make it uh, wrong afterwards because I... I didn't follow my initial my initial instinct nah, nonsense i just made up my mind and I, I i like it this way more that's what it is so this also means that we can uh, start making a bit of a changes here so I'm going to delete these walls here, as I don't want the uh, wall as fat on the uh, on the roof. That doesn't seem right. We're going to make fortifications happen here, and yeah. Once I'm done with the fortifications, I'll have uh, another look. We definitely will have a wall surrounding this then, like here. <clears throat> and I think this should then serve for for a nice castle wally look for for beginners. I mean, there's still so much that I uh, that I want to do when it comes down to castle building, but probably not for this fortress. It's always a bit difficult. You either build a uh, something impressive in the mountain or above uh, or or on the surface, as it seems to me. Or both. That's a lot of work that nobody watches, except if a uh, few people. Okay, so here I go very, very carefully. As you see there, the uh, stakes are high. But down here we can now safely grind our way downstairs. So we're going to go there. Perfect spot. Okay, once the puddles here are dried out, I will start opening the door. But as long as there's water on the floor, I find it a little bit dangerous because I don't want some spontaneous obsidianizations of, of people happening. Plot twist, usually the dwarf doesn't survive if he's getting encased in a mixture of liquid hot magma and water. Surprisingly enough. Okay, so we're getting closer to the end of today's episode. I thank you all for watching. I really, really appreciate this uh, getting this done. <laughs> I mean, 
it's really, really difficult for me to accept that this uh, season can't end the way that I want it to end, but uh, maybe I'll find some way to make it my end still. That all being said, I want to say thanks for watching, and we're going to continue next episode. And let me all know what you would do in my scenario. Maybe you have a solution that I don't know of. And yeah, feel free to leave a like, leave a subscribe. Check out the description box with all the other fortresses that I am playing there. And feel free to support the channel financially. There's a couple of links down there that you might want to check out. Thanks for being around. Thanks for supporting if you do. And especially thanks for watching. Really means a lot to me. See you soon.